Welcome, Math Humans. We're going to do 5.6b today. We're going to be continuing our work with related rates. Our objectives are that we're going to get more practice. Yeah, math. Example number one, a pebble is dropped into a calm pond, causing ripples in the pond to form in concentric circles. And then in case you don't remember, concentric circles have the same center point and then they have different radii. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. When the radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area of the undisturbed water changing? This one's actually kind of nice and straightforward. So let's say here's my diagram. There's my radius. I know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. I know that the radius is increasing at a constant rate, so I know that dr over dt is going to equal 1 foot per second. And I'm actually looking for how fast is the area changing, so I'm looking for dA over dt when r is equal to 4 feet, and that's my task. So this one's actually kind of polite and straightforward because I don't have I don't need to write a secondary equation. I have dr dt. I'm looking for dA dt. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to get dA over dt is equal to pi times 2r dr over dt. And now if I substitute in what I know, here is my 2 pi. My radius is 4, and my dr dt is equal to 1. So this is just going to be 8 pi. I'm done. That one was nice and easy. Sometimes you get lucky and they're very straightforward. So I'm going to say dA over dt is equal to 8 pi. My units area is square, so it's going to be square feet per unit of time, which in this one was per second. And we evaluated it when my radius was 4. So that's a nice polite start to today. All right, so now as we look at our second problem, it says that a camera at ground level 2,000 feet from a rocket is filming the lift off of a rocket that is rising vertically according to the position function s of t is equal to 50 t squared, where s of t is 50 and t is in, or sorry, where s of t is feet and t is in seconds. Find the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the camera tracking the path of the rocket 10 seconds after liftoff. So as we draw the diagram for this one, it's going to be kind of the same triangle. So here's my triangle. We assume that the rocket's going straight up. My camera is going to be here. This is going to be theta. Here is my 2,000 feet, so I'm safe distance from the rocket. And my rocket's position function is... 50 t squared. So the rocket is going that way. So I'm going to write down kind of my information. I know s of t is 50 t squared. I know that if I take the derivative of that, ds over dt is going to equal 100 t. And then I know that d theta over dt is what I'm looking for. And I want to know what happens when time is equal to 10. So now what I need is an equation that relates my theta and my position function. So I'm going to say that my tangent of theta is going to equal my s of t over the 2,000. Okay. So now as I substitute things in, I'm actually going to not substitute yet, and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So now when I take the derivative, I'm going to get secant squared theta, d theta over dt, is going to equal, here's the 1 over 2,000. I've already taken the derivative, so I'm going to write that as, um, what am I going to write it as? I'm going to write it as 100t. And this is actually, the 100t is my derivative, so it's actually already my ds dt. And I'm going to evaluate that when time is equal to 10. So now I have secant squared theta, d theta over dt, is going to equal, oops, I forgot a zero, 
Oh, no, I didn't. I did good. When I put the 10 in, so I'm going to get 100 times 10 over 2,000, which is going to equal 1,000 divided by 2,000. Those guys cancel, so I get 1 half. I'm still trying to solve for d theta dt, so I'm going to get d theta dt is going to equal my 1 half and then I'm going to divide by secant squared theta, which is the same thing as 1 over 2 cosine squared theta. Well, the problem is I don't actually have the information that I need to, to solve the angle, but I can talk about position. So let's go back to our diagram. And here's my theta, if, and here's my 2,000 feet. Well, at time is equal to 10, my position function is going to be 50 times 100 squared, which is going to be 5,000. So then I actually now know tangent. So I'm going to, I could do the tangent of theta is 5,000 over, sorry, I'll move it up so you can see, over the 2,000. 1, 2, 3, so I get 5 over 2. And theta is going to equal the inverse tangent of 5 over 2. If you push buttons on your grapher, radians always in calculus, you're going to get that that is 1.190 radians. Well, now that I know the angle, I can find d theta dt. So d theta over dt, here's the half, and I'm going to do the cosine squared of 1.190 radians, and when I push buttons on my calculator, I get 0 0.069 radians per second. And so when I report well, I say d theta over dt is equal to 0 0.069 radians per second when time is equal to 10 seconds. So this one had its own unique caveat in that I had to go back to the original position function to be able to come up with a measure for theta so that I could find my d theta dt. All right, my dears, that's it for today. I will see you soon.